Now that we've got a few WordPress skills under our belts, we're going to up the difficulty and create this what's your next move section. The reason this is a little more difficult is because this section involves a background image along with two different boxes and two buttons on top of the image. It's just a little more building, but if you're up to it, I definitely think you can get it done. Alright, so the first thing we need is this widget itself. What widget is this? Well, it's called a layout builder. So let's go back to our page editor. And of course, we need a new row. And in the new row, we want it to be just one column, 100%. And click insert. And sometimes it'll put the row in the wrong place. You just need to hover on the little arrows and drag and drop. So I'm just clicking to hold and drag until it gets positioned. Still clicking, holding, and then letting go to drop it in there. Now I click to select the widget, add widget, and we want the layout builder. All right, where is it? Layout builder. And there she is right here, layout builder. And what this lets us do, believe it or not, is create a row within a row. When we open up Layout Builder, we now have all the options for a row or widget. You can basically create infinite rows inside infinite rows, which we don't want to do. That's too crazy for now. We're just a little bit crazy. What we want to do now is make two more rows. All right, so it's, you know, a little bit crazy. You can click this row or you can click this add row. All right, and we're going to make a 50-50 row, so click Insert. And then we want to add one more row, which is just the single column. And then click Insert. All right, and let's drag our single column row to the top. Now let's start putting some widgets in here and start building it. The first widget we need is really simple. Just click on the top row to highlight it, and then add a widget, and just add a simple text. Click Text. Now we can open text and let's just write in a title, which is what's your next move. So really simple. This is just the title of the section. Put the question mark in there and we're good to click done. All right, so it's really not too hard. All right, guys. All right, now we want to select the lower left column and add a widget there. Add widget and we want to add the call to action right here. This one, call to action. All right, and then it's in there. Now let's open the call to action up. And we see that this is just a simple text area with a button. Simple yet very powerful. All right, and because we're getting a little more advanced, I had to actually open up the Just a Demo website that I made about a month ago and then get the exact content from it so we can use it. The first part is just the call to action, which is just text. Copy. And then in this section, write in whatever text you want right above the button. Now we need some text for the button itself, which is called the title. And we want this button to say, meet the team, because when people click it, it's going to take them down to the team section, which shows the profile photos. For a link for the button, we're going to use the same structure as we did for our first button. We need the pound sign, PG, dash, whatever your page ID is in this upper top bar. In my case, it's a seven. So put in whatever your front page page ID is. Then put a dash. And then we're going to need the number of the section we want this to go to. In our case, it's section three. The section we're making now with the layout builder widget is section two. And one below it is section three. All right, great job. Now this is getting even more advanced and I want you to click on attributes. And in this section, we're going to copy paste in some CSS styles. All right. So I said you wouldn't have to write any code and we really don't, but we're going to copy paste in some CSS that I've written so that this section looks a little bit cooler. At this point, I want you to open up the video notes below. Just click show more and where it says copy paste me, click the link. In that file, I'm going to give you all the content we can't simply write out together because it takes too long. All right, and what this is, is a little bit of CSS that looks like this. I can copy paste it because I have it written on my computer in the just a demo site, but you can't 
like copy paste it through my screen and that's why I'm giving you the copy paste me file. So just click that link, find the right section, which I'll label clearly. I'm going to make it really clear for you guys and just copy the section that looks like this. All right, and then come back to the layout builder and paste it in the CSS styles window, just like that. All right, and what this is going to do is give this particular section a slightly darker background shade and click done. Now what we want to do is make another similar call to action in the lower right column. Click to select it, click add widget, and click the call to action. Open it up and we need some content. So I'm going to get that from just a demo. The first thing we can paste in is that CSS because we already have it copied. So let's paste in that same CSS for background color, RGBA, blah, blah, blah. Just one line like this, all right, which we copy pasted together. Now we're going to need the call to action. All right, so let's copy that from just a demo. Paste that in. And we're going to set up the title, which is the link text. And that's just going to say, get the facts. And we need a link for the button. Same structure as before, pound sign PG dash whatever your page ID is. Mine's a seven again, dash four for section four. Now click done. All right, really amazing job. It's time to see what we made. So let's click done and let's update this page. And now when we refresh our demo site, we'll see some more content beneath the what do we provide you section, which is the layout builder itself. All right, we can see we're on the right track, but the spacing is way off. So how do we adjust the spacing in between the content in one of our sections? To do that, we need to adjust the margin and the padding within a section. So come back to the page editor, open up the particular section we're working on, which is the layout builder. Click in the middle to open it. And now to edit the spacing in between the rows, hover on the wrench and click edit row. Now click layout and we're going to set a top bottom padding to zero. By default, right here, it says that the padding is 100 pixels, and that's the white space we're seeing. That's why it's so much, because by default, this is 100. And when we set that to zero, that'll bring that content in closer together. Just put a zero in right here and click done. And now let's do the same thing for the upper row. Edit row, layout, top bottom padding of zero, and click done. Done, and at the same time, let's give our layout builder a little more padding itself. Let's click on this wrench. So we were clicking before on the wrenches within the layout builder. Now we're gonna click on the wrench outside the layout builder. Click layout, and let's just give ourselves a top bottom padding of 50, and just trust me that that'll look good. While we're here, we can do our technique we learned just a moment ago to make the row layout wider by selecting row layout full width and click done and update and refresh the site. All right, so now our layout builder is looking more like a real section on a real website. It's a lot cleaner. What we need to complete this section though is the background image. So to insert a background image on well, behind a section, behind some content, you're gonna need to do what we do right now. Come back to the page editor, and then there's a few places to put a background image. You just have to make sure you're putting it in the right place. In our case, because we want the background image to go behind this entire area, we wanna put it as a background image on the entire row. So hover on the gear, on this outermost row for the layout builder, Click Edit Row, and now visit Design. And where it says Background Image, we need to select Image. But first, we need an actual image. So let's get that free image that we used on just a demo, and that was the image of the sunglasses. To do so, what I did was I visited pixabay.com. That's P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. 
this is where I like to get all my free high quality images. It's so amazing what you can find and just click on the different types of images and see what you find. It's a lot of fun. For now, just do a search for uh, sunglasses. And we're gonna get some options. So of course we need to narrow it down a little. How do we find the right sunglasses? Well, maybe we'll get lucky. Or maybe we can click a type of sunglasses that's close to what we want. And it's not gonna give us the right related images, even though it's a pretty cool image in itself. All right, so I wanna do a different sort of search. And I'm gonna search for workspace. Click enter. And there we go, I see it, I spy it. Here's the image we want. It's just part of a workspace with a computer and a notebook and some coffee. To actually get the image once you found the right one, let's click on free download. Let's choose the original size so it's large and high quality and let's click download. And I also recommend buying Pixabay a cup of coffee with the PayPal donation. All right, now let's go back to our page editor and let's click select image for background image upload files, select files, and let's upload our second image, which has found its way to our downloads folder. I'm going to double click sunglasses. You can double click or hit open to upload the image. And there it is. Once the image is uploaded, just click done, done again. And now let's update and let's see what we made. Refresh the site. Now we can see we have a nice background image which shows up perfectly just the way we made it. To finish off our layout builder section, we just need to change the font colors. To change the font colors of this title and of these smaller titles, come back to our page editor and open up the layout builder so we can get at the text itself. Let's change the color of our simple text title. Just open it up and click design and then we want to change the widget title color. Click select color and click on just a simple red or whatever it is you like. Now click done. Next let's change the call to action colors. Open it up, click design. And for this section we want to change the headings color. So select color. And if you know the exact hex color you want, you can actually just write it in on the right. You just need to write in six different digits, six different letters or numbers that match the color you want. In our case, we know this one. It's just a light gray. Click done. Open up the second call to action, design, headings color, and let's make that that same EA, EA, EA. Because it looks good, and click done, done, and update. Boy, that's a lot of work just to change a bunch of font colors. But now when we refresh, our layout builder section is done. This looks amazing. Did we really just make that together? Great job.